Bro Gang, we are joined by the ghost tag governor, Lawrence Schlossman, and myself, the ceviche sultan, James Harris. Welcome to the weekly Running of the Boys with today's full episode, only available on Patreon.com slash Thornfits. Lawrence, how's your week? Very busy. Yeah? And today is a soggy, what? depressing. What are you talking about? We did. Th- this is our third pod this week. Second. Oh, I cannot... Oh, we're doing a pod tomorrow. This, yeah. Well, I've done three pods this week. All right, so I guess I'm already I'm, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm complaining. This is a normal more. week. <laughs> um, I cannot wait to spoil next week's guests Ooh, behind the paywall. This is the last boys only a bona fide ever in celebrity. this apartment. Chateau um, Jimbo, rest in peace. Yeah. Rest know, in piss. Yeah, rest in piss. I cannot bitch. wait to take a massive shit in your new crib. Well, you'll have a choice of two destinations that, to uh, park those true. bad boys. Okay, I can't wait. Um, Drop the kids off at the pool. All right, before we get into the Gucci Balenciaga hacking, before we get to the death knell of Corpo Corpo, rest in peace, that dead bitch, scammer season blossoming and in full effect. Nature is healing, scammer season is back. A special announcement, uh, Throng Fits live show details mm. behind the paywall. Can't and wait. So, so much more. Let's get into a fit check. Yeah, you want to start us off, bud? Yeah, um, I got these socks on from some company that, like, I never, I don't remember talking to them at all. Let me, You're I sitting they, so awkwardly uh, right now. What are you Denholm. <laughs> Denholm. Oh, you're trying to read the brand? These, like, yeah, they sent it in this... Again, I don't know, maybe it's an agency that has my address on uh, file, but they just sent it through with, like, no card, no, like, no Instagram tag, right? We always say that, like, yo, if you're going to send some shit, yes, put your please. Instagram there because Let us know. we have a lot of conversations and a lot of flow, and we can't always keep track. Yeah. Um, Hate to break it to you, but you're just a statistic, even though yeah. you are being so generous and kind. And I didn't, I, I kind of broke the unwritten rules of, like, flow team quid pro quo, and I didn't put these on my IG story because unlike some, socks. Well, unlike some other podcasters I know, I'm not trying to just, like, shill and, like, tag and post everything that I get for yeah. Free because like, it's just it's and I gauche. and I love that this is actually not a shot against me, which is yeah, great because yeah. nor- well, normally right. I would be uh, catching no. the ire um, of uh, your floating politics. SK Manor Hill, one of my favorite small brands here in New York. Shout out, Wide uh, Whale Fat Cords, big fat boy cords, and then the shirt is from a company that I just discovered and love. The, the plug from Norse Projects, I believe, went over there. It's MF Pen. Okay. Which I believe is Danish for motherfucking pen. Nice. Um, <laughs> they source dead stock fabrics across different mills in Europe and upcycle them. God, I want to tuck that in for you so badly. No, it's so much better untucked. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I ain't no <laughs> James, James is a big fan of untuck it. <laughs> <laughs> well, also like there's no there, like, it's a drawstring waistband. Oh pants, sure, so right. Yeah. Which if you read my pontifications on tucking in Blackbird spy plane, you would know that right. If it's a drawstring Me situation. And Jonah. I'm not going to talk. Me and Jonah are in a, a bit of a Twitter tiff over tucking and untucking. Yeah. Um, not gonna, we'll hash it out in person. Not all those who tuck are narcs, but all narcs tuck. And he's like defending narcs weirdly. I don't know why Jonah. Like, why are you defending? Damn narcs? bootlicker. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. And then up top, uh, Jam Store. Shout out our guy Sam. Even though I wasn't able to get the right Arteryx Dead Bird X Dead Bird Yin Yang, because uh, he sent you the wrong address. He did tell me big things coming soon. And <laughs> Nothing bigger than that, though. I know. Fuck. That's um. So when you move, you're not going to update your address with plugs or like what? You're I just don't know what to do. To be honest, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, first and foremost, I got to update it with like the IRS, since I think that this is the official HQ from Fitz fuck, LLC. You're so right. It is. So yeah. we're probably going to get hit with m- even more penalties. Yeah, that's the last thing we need. More interest, um, more penalties. God damn yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, they're Fuck definitely going to fucking come repo our ass. Uncle Sam sucked my dick. But uh, no, I, I don't I don't know what protocol is, yeah. honestly. So if you're trying to get me on flow, hit me up in two weeks <laughs> and ask me what the new Addy is. No, one week. Lawrence? Uh, I wore um, Blundstones to the crib, and I'm only... I want to get out ahead of that. I know that normally you would shit on me for not wearing the pod boots. We are going to a function tonight together yeah. after we record. And the last thing I wanted to do is be the dude wearing the same very hyper niche specific boots as my boy. Even if we were the oh, designers. You're, you're assuming that I'm wearing them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's pretty. I mean, it's a, it's a disgusting, sloppy, soggy day here in normally beautiful Greenpoint. And, you know, I just figured that you would be wearing yours tonight. I don't know if you thought about that. Uh, they're an option. But, like, I try not to wear out my nice shoes for a night that I know, like, might get, speaking of sloppy, yeah, but, like sloppy, so. But, but those shoes are, like, made, to, they're made to play in the mud. Yeah. Uh, might trot out some beaters, but also we're going to be Ubering there, like, we're not going to be oh, we are. Ubering there. On the yeah. corporate card. On the card. Oh, fucking perfect. Yeah. Okay, so Blundstones to the crib. I have on Supreme Hane socks. I am wearing um, vintage Levi's 501s. I got on the new Juicy Stussy Gucci work shirt. Speaking of plugs, shout out the fucking Yoker. We both got delicioso yeah. packs sent to our correct home addresses. Which was a funny duality man moment. I where, mean, that's like, everything I we stand for. I submitted the order, and it re- uh, you were like, what do you get? And I was like, I got these shorts, these shorts, 
and this sweatshirt. crew neck, and you got a double breasted suit jacket yeah, and the work shirt. And I was like, yo, this really is like duality, man. Yeah, Jenna already hates this Dookie Brown flannel <laughs> number, so you know good. it's fucking good. I got fucking fantasy explosion on the dome piece. Shout out Kevin Shakespeare in the park merch. Free plug. You know, yeah, wow, damn. You know, we plugs can go both ways. That's a two way street. Yeah. So let's plug Kevin. Double sided dildo. That'll 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 be out, yo. <laughs> <laughs> the if, rare double sided dildo. If plug. our relationships are anything with plugs, it's that everybody gets fucked. Yep, um, spread them. Everybody nuts here on Throwing Fits, the only podcast that matters. Um, and then I wore more free shit. I wore my fucking Dead Bird uh, Alpha SV for all the clones out there. The Limon joint. Mm. Um, and uh, roll the on the wrist, wedding ring on the finger, and we are drinking yeah. nice little single-serving cocktails from our friends at Tip Top. Uh, based in A-Town, they just fucking, <laughs> I guess they're on like all Delta flights now, so you know I'm going to be fucking uh, hitting the dude up for next time I'm, I'm on the flying, next time I'm flying D, yeah. I'm going to hit up my guy Neil and be like, Neil, S- fucking. Sm- smuggle on a couple single serving. There are single serving cocktails that you can drink out of a can or pour over ice. You are drinking an old fashioned. I'm drinking a Negroni. Yeah. They're very fucking good. Yes. I can also feel it coursing through my veins. And yo, they're not paying us. No. Right. Once again, if you want to just send us shit to get us fucked up, like we will put you on come on we're generous center guys. yeah and just taste it live on li- live on pot yeah there's also a margarita from my uh, fucking spicy boys out there and then there's also what is a manhattan. Oh, a manhattan as well yep. um so shout out tip top thank you for getting us drunk yo uh did you see an- did you watch another round i think it's on hulu no i watched the first scene which like made me want to go i know it's in denmark yeah right but it takes place at this like summertime like lake Right. Well, well, that's the opening scene is like kind of yeah, giving yeah, yeah. you a, a window into the kind of drinking. Apparently, the, the the movie, whether or not you see it as an indictment or a celebration of inebriation and fun times with the boys, just you know, just a dude's rock type thing. Uh, it is a very accurate representation of Danish drinking culture. That's what I've been told. So they just get fucked up like for an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. So the so the point of the movie, and actually, this is this poses an interesting question. So the point of the movie is a bunch of uh, dudes who are teachers at this school are having kind of like a <laughs> midlife crisis moment. Not the the students are who's in the opening scene. Um, oh, okay. But the 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 main cast led by my man's fucking Mads yeah. Nicholson, who's in who's always in fucking goat mode, but absolutely gets fucking after it. And I also, by the way, this movie is nominated for uh, the Best Director Academy Award, so you, you know that this is this is the real deal. Anyway, the point of the movie is Not that Best the, Foreign Film. No, well, it actually probably is as well. I'm um, just saying, you know that they if they looked any other way. It might have been foreign. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, these dudes are basically testing out a somewhere between scientific and philosophical hypothesis that... Uh, About getting fucked up? No, well, <laughs> that, that some philosopher, some Danish philosopher... It's whoever, zoodology. Uh, yeah. <laughs> zoodology. That, uh, that basically he put forth the notion that humans are not meant to necessarily be sober, but truly function at their highest rate at some point, some BAC, between sobriety and full-on inebriation. And these gentlemen, um, fueled by their midnight, their midlife crisis and booze, they are testing out you know, various degrees of kind of BAC that has them optimally performing in both their professional and personal life. As you can imagine, things don't necessarily go as planned, mm. but it is a beautiful movie. Sounds like a Danish old school. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Um, I was going to say, what is the optimal, BAC for you to podcast. Well, I don't know what BAC is. Blood alcohol. Um, no, I, I mean I don't know what it stands for. But oh, I don't know, I, like, yeah, I'm, I'm just like, saying. Oh, my you BAC is a fucking. We could get six. breathalyzers. These guys impl- employ uh, the 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 handy dandy. Yeah, but that's breathalyzer that's metric system shit. Like, um, is it? No, when it comes to, like amount of drinks, I mean, it's kind of tough. Like there was a moment over the summer when we were, you know, we're going too hard and we we're going way too hard. Where. As mainly on the guest episodes, but the zooms as well. Yeah, are the you know the boys only zooms. Especially because well. we were tapping in with a lot of homies like Trey Kirby, Jonah Weiner, Sean uh, Evans. Jonah, I mean, a lot of a lot of boys that I'm excited you know, for the Jonah Weiner in person one because I'm I only kind of remember like the you know <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, remember some of that some of that is, some of that is lost to history. Yeah, yeah. Part, part two is just part that. two is is literally and figuratively in the ether in um, the dark when Jonah started like joining us and he's like yeah, yeah. I'll drink I'll drink a, I'll drink some IPAs I'm in the Bay Area I just yeah. went for a cycle I have I'll have some some fucking double and, IPAs. and as and as we discussed with him a big part of cycling is like the culture of partying Afterwards, the drinking the, opera, yeah. the fucking blasting of darts that kind of happen uh while what? sometimes during and sometimes after one pod that I thought that we were very on with and 
the the amount of booze was like correlated with with that. I think was with Taylor Lorenz. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I drank a big beer very quickly at the beginning, and, and then just kind of like <laughs> rode it through. Nice. So I like, like that. we like we like we we went turbo you peak, and then, and then, and then, you then we coast. very slowly coasted downhill. Yeah, down a gentle slope. Yeah. Um, which like that was the only time where I was like, huh, maybe I shouldn't drink a whole bottle of wine. In the movie, they also talk about like the one of the rules. Uh, I believe at the offset is like you're not drinking like after six. Like you're drink you're not drinking to like party. You're drinking to like achieve some type of peak performance, whether that is in your again, personal life, professional life, whatever human interactions, your teaching job, whatever. Um I feel like every time that that we've been like damn, we were too fucked up. Like that, the last that uh, pod YouTube was episode. ass. Like 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 the like the AMA part two that is now uh live on YouTube. So you you can be the judge of that. We always get great feedback after the fact. Yeah. So I'm wondering if well, there, like, if there oh, truly is no limit. We're always like, oh fuck, did we uh did yeah. we uh, that must did, have been that must did, have sucked. Did we go too hard? <laughs> um but yeah, I don't know. My rule for for like time is always on Sunday fun days particularly, uh don't drink after eight. And you should oh, be fine for sure for, on a you, Sunday, no doubt. Monday. I mean, you know, if not you're, that we like need to be fine on Monday. No, no. Honestly, Monday we have a four day weekend in place for a reason. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is typically. <laughs> listen, if certain things are holy and off the table and respected uh, for us, it is our personal time, and we will not work on those days. Every day is a three day weekend. As yeah. <laughs> <perfectly real. laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but the Shout opening Chuck. scene at the lake um, brought me back, and that's all I watched. And I was like, oh fuck, like I want to go watch Sopranos. Um, <laughs> reminded me of. Not in Denmark, but you know, similarly in Germany, they have these amazing, beautiful lakes right outside Berlin. It's like a twenty-minute Uber, or like you can take a fucking you know public transportation, obviously. Right. But we chose to take private transportation. Why not? Um, <laughs> and it's great. Like it, you know, you don't have kids like running around like chugging beer until they vomit, but everyone is there like drinking Mad. That's line. a case race. I think they're doing a case yeah? race. Yeah. Okay. Movie, something um, like, with bottles. And I was there with Dick sucking Ron and Asher with the big hog. And I hope I'm not putting him too on blast, but like basically, like everyone's just like drinking, and then Asher's just like Asher with the big hog is just like, "Yo, I gotta take a shit." And we're <laughs> like, well, there's nowhere to go. Like, yeah, there, like the nearest like sausage hall is like a 30 minute walk that way or whatever. Like, you fucking should have planned accordingly. He go, he like tr- the mayor of the he sausage trundles hall. off into the woods, which are like not dense, not not dense, right? And like people, like it's a pretty populated area. Like it's where like families go and like young people go to like spend. The where day. families go to binge drink. You yes, know? exactly. <laughs> um, so he is taking a shit and decides to just start loudly singing, uh, so that if people if people were like stumbling through or walking through, they would like hear him and not like actually stumble upon a you know American just taking a big old shitty ole while like just like scrolling on his phone. Um, comes back. This is pre-pandemic, obviously, so we didn't have any Purell on us or anything. And we're just like, bro, uh, please just do not touch the snacks. Do not touch, like, the wine. Don't even fucking go in the water because, like, yeah. you have a shitty ass right now. Like, you, We didn't have toilet paper. Yeah, did he wash his hands in the water at least? We were just like, do not touch anything. Do yeah. not touch us. Like, eventually we'll make it back to the town and then you can, like, You're literally nuclear right now. Don't touch anything. Yeah, and then he uh, immediately just, like, opens a bottle <laughs> of wine. Like sticks his thumb in the fucking hummus. That's disgusting. Like breaks some bread, breaks some pita up, and we're just like, "Yo, we cannot drink or eat any of this stuff." Um, Asher with the big hog, you're out of pocket. Um, I am that day. He was Asher with the big log. (laughs) Nice, well done. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that for me right now. I'm thinking that, and I think about this a lot too because you know me. I I like to Chuck and I. We like to dabble with the bud. Like to dab. Yeah, exactly. Um, And I think that you know sometimes the thing with me is getting too high, and then it's like, "Yo, the Larry monologues are very out of pocket. More out of." You're turbocharging the monologue, which is wild. That that's what weed does to you, and not like it makes me other more creative. It substances. makes me have more things to say. It makes me think that I'm funnier and smarter than I am. That's how I feel. It affects a lot of people, sativa specifically. Right. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to do today. I think I'm going to do. I just did my. I just topped off my first Negroni cocktail with my second Negroni cocktail. Oh yeah, let me get a let me get a little ice cube. I d- I'm not Ash with the big log. I'm not. My hands are good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think I'm going to do. I'll do two cocktails. These are strong and they're delicious. Um. So I yeah, don't want to fly the, too close don't to the, let the sun. Stubby cans fool you. Um. Anyway, enough tip top plugging. Yeah. Let's get into thank you, the tip top meat and potatoes. Let's we're get into the show. Let's do the, let's do the damn show. Well, uh, oh, right. so I can say, yo, Gillian Jacobs yes. next week. Uh, shout out slapper, Phil, absolute fucking shout slapper. out Phil Chang for setting the ting. It's been a year in the making. We love Gillian. 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 Fuck. The I didn't G- fuck it up on the pod. The G in her name is like her fits hard. Yeah. And I've always been a, I've always been like, I'm like yo this is like the cool girl this is like the like the hipster cool girl like she's down with like uh illegal civ she does cool projects um, she knows about Johns she knows about Johns 
And after, and I'm like, trust me, like this is gonna be a fucking absolute smackioli. Yeah, and then afterwards, awesome. he's like, yo, she rules. Yeah, that was amazing. I'm I'm a fan for life now. Uh, that is a super fun episode that I cannot wait for everybody to hear uh, next Tuesday. Yeah. I will not spoil who we are recording with tomorrow. Uh, not a celebrity, but a super fucking cool dude, and we'll spoil that for you next week. Anyway, sorry. Please right. get back uh, to the gym. The the one company that the one brand that kind of stole our thunder this week um mm. only that like they're celebrating their 100th anniversary yes it is the they had a, they had an aria a runway show today they have a movie being made about them maybe we do too uh <laughs> scoochie gucci yeah. is having a little bit of a fucking moment right now yeah obviously today that i don't even know what the clothes looked like um in their little aria runway show except for the gucci x balenciaga the gucci gaga the goo goo gaga shout out mark Zabino. uh it's definitely so I just saw whatever like, yo, if you think that I'm going to log on to VogueRunway.com and sift through 96 looks um, from two. Is that really what it was? For, yes. From two, from two. Bra- I mean, that's not a surprise. No. I mean, honestly, that's you, a lot. It, no, it's absolutely a lot. But that's like what what these brands kind of do. Just no, no. 96 is like up there. Dude, this is this is I, I guess it is men's and women's combined. Right. Are you going to cop? Oh, that's true. Are you going to cop the. Uh, the overcoat with the horse bit? No. The oversized <laughs> horse bit? No, I'm not. But I just saw I just saw what, what kind of hit the timeline, and as much as this just sucks and is not cool to me, um, it, what else was this supposed to look like? Like, of course there was going to be logos out the fucking ass, a giant fucking horse bit, all yeah. the silhouettes um, that whether we've we come to love them, we have come to know them like that fucking Balenciaga parka, the fucking bag shapes, all of that stuff. It is what it is. I d- definitely didn't expect this to be anything but what it was. So it was like Gucci and Balenciaga logos slapped all over each other. Um, honestly, for me, I was like, yo, I'm never gonna wear this. I I hate anyone that will well, this wear this. Is ju- this is made expressly for foreign exchange students. Everywhere. There it is. There's first instance <laughs> of racism on today's episode. Um, At least it was behind the paywall. Yeah, and it's sure. not even racism. No, you got you got to pay. You got to pay for. Lies. I didn't say Asian exchange. You got to pay. You got to pay for Lawrence's racism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this was so brazen and such like so obvious that I was almost like, yo, I kind of respect it. Like this is some scammer shit. We're just like <laughs> we all knew what it was gonna be, and they are who we said they were. Yeah. Right. Um. And what else? What the fuck else can you do when you like two uh, logo crazed companies do come together and, and have sex? You have a fucking double logo, baby. But this was so brazen and so ridiculous and absurd and over the top that I kind of respected it. And, and it's not a collaboration, right? We should say it's that a hacking. it's hacking. It's a hacking. These are both. Uh, Alessandra went into the Demna archives at Balenciaga yeah. and fucking the super know, deep archive whatever, whatever. that's five years old, yeah. and they're both carrying brands. And this is obviously this like this is also this was also it's a publicity stunt for for you know to celebrate the centennial. It is a Voltron moment for the two most popular and profitable carrying brands. Yep. Like this should come as no surprise. Who right? else is in the carrying umbrella though that Gucci could kind of go in and have? Oh, I don't even I don't even know. I, I I mean, we, we you could Google it right now if you want. If okay. you want me to fucking uh, rifle off. One thing that was interesting to me is that I caught myself doing the thing where, like, being a hater, where, like, you know, just kind of like how Saint Laurent, Bottega, McQueen, oh shit, damn, Brioni, a lot of bangers. Uh, but the two, but the two <laughs> carrying eyewear, and I guess Demna and Alessandro are like friends or like fake fashion friends. And that, te- by the way, that. That text chain yeah. that was used was a WhatsApp. to promote the what whatever that WhatsApp text chain. That was like and I know these guys are supposed to be like, you know, bastions of creativity in the future of fashion or even the current moment of fashion. I'm like, this is the most corny, boring conversation yeah. that two like like Demna two and Alessandro, brains. if they ever had a fucking podcast, it'd be like the worst podcast you've ever heard in your life. That'd like, be like most podcasts out there. I appreciated that they kept Alessandro's broken English in there. Um, that you know they, that was nice. Text, that was authentic. They text like most of you motherfuckers tweet, where it's just like exclamation point. Like yeah. you said, it was like a riot DM conversation, where it's like people being overly enthusiastic and performative yeah. because like you're trying to impress the other that person. Was, that was my second uh, version of the tweet. My first one was like these motherfuckers text like you motherfuckers tweet, which mm. is just re- regarding specifically the exclamation points. Can we please stop? Tweeting with exclamation points. This is not a work email. You've been CC'd on a lot of my work that's emails. A, that's you a Nomi see, Fry thing. Don't steal her shit. It's not. It's not Nomi Fry. Nomi Fry does not. Really? She, she doesn't? She is not. I, well, I'm not. Tr- I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not trying to, be rude, trying but to I'm not saying. give her credit. I'm trying to not lump her into this with fucking bullshit format. Civilians, like, pedestrians, etc. Yeah, where it's like, observation. So crazy. 
Yeah. That's not Nomi Fry. I caught myself on some, on some hater shit where, like, you know how a, you know, fucking dog avatar-ass motherfucker on Twitter would be like, hey, LeBron, shut up and dribble. Yeah. Or, like, uh, 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 yeah, stick, to, stick to sports when they get political or whatever. You know, that's me being like, um, yeah, yeah uh, stick to loafers, you know, or, or whatever. Uh, you know, shut up and stick play the shooting. hits. And it's like, yo, just because you and I, when, it, when, when we say we're fans of Gucci, we literally mean we are fans of, like, Gucci loafers specifically. That's an iconic shoe. Yeah. Um, there will always be a pair in both of our rotation. But y- you forget that, like, sometimes that we're not even remotely the target demo or, or you know, uh, a target audience for this uh, whatsoever. Well, so, especially like, the I, Alessandro. I, I feel bad getting mad because it's like, you know, I'm, I feel me, old and corny. Well, to me, I become a fan of, like, the... Well, I've always been a fan of, like, the absurd and, like, kind of... Uh, this was... Even though everyone knew it was coming, this was still so absurd and... It's really just like if absurdity is what you're going for. There's only so much like absurdity o- has currency. Oh yes, there's so much. There's only so much like over the topness, and only so far you can move the goalposts of like absurdism. Right before this pendulum swings all the way back, and I really, it's gonna happen soon. We're gonna come back. You think to like, there's gonna be ramifications from this? There's gonna this be like link. I mean, big is, link is, is this the big logo mania crest? I, I mean, please God, it certainly seems like it. But are people gonna try and like top this? Obviously, yes. Uh, well, especially when they see the commercial su- success of it, right? right? And, and you have Balenciaga, which is the number one pound for pound like meme brand champion, right? Right. And then you have uh, Alessandro's Gucci, which is like the number one pound for pound heavyweight maximalism champion in the world. So it's like when you smash these things together, you're gonna get a glitter suit that's <laughs> fucking you know with the monogram, with the fucking logos everywhere, and and maybe that will look cool on a red carpet or like a, or or like a music video yeah right exactly like uh, f- uh or on the back of someone like a lady gaga mm. um or, but but for me it's like I, i'm not interested this was a totally manufactured moment and like you said you yeah, kind of have to like, begrudgingly respect yeah what, what else is there right in uh today's day and age um something else that is being manufactured <laughs> is the gucci movie can't wait, dude. Which is are you, do you want to do you want to see this? By the way, just real quick oh, before you yes, explain it. Yes, I, I hate Adam Driver. I think that really? Finn Finn Meadows, you know, boyfriend and, and fiance is like the poor is, is like the real Adam Driver. Okay. Um, but the Gucci movie is being filmed currently, and there's all these Ridley like, Scott le- produced by Sir Ridley Scott, starring Adam Driver, Lady Gaga, Al Pacino, Jared Leto. Uh, yeah, which is like funny because he's a Gucci. Uh, ambassador right, right? well that's the thing gucci. right the gucci the company and, and karen group has thrown their full support behind they, they this bless infomercial them, they bless them feature like, length do, infomercial do whatever the fuck you want it centers around and we're going to get to this it centers around uh parizia gucci uh hold on, hold on let me find this uh mar- who married the son or grandson of the fa- of the of the, the, founder. the founder, I think it's yeah. his son. I think it's it was his son. Maurizio Gucci, who's play by, played by Adam Driver. Yeah, and the doomed love story of him and Pariz- Patrizia Reggiani, later <laughs> Patrizia Gucci. <laughs> He's naming cheeses now. <laughs> his wife Parmigiano yeah. Reggiano Pecorino. Gucci. Um, but so the Gucci business group has like thrown their full support behind. They love it. this. They but gave the full Gucci, access to the archives for the costumes. But the Gucci they've endorsed family, it. They co-signed it. <laughs> uh, has taken up umbrage with specifically the photos around Al Pacino and Jared Leto <laughs> of Pacino's portrayal of Aldo Gucci, the father of Maurizio. Maurizio was the guy that was that was shot and killed in 98. Well, the, so the whole point, and this is not like no spoilers because you can Wikipedia this. Um, well, Lady Gaga's character hires so, uh, well, a hitman. Do you want to get into the, into the details of that? Well, we should, we should give the context I was, I was first. You want, okay, let me pull up the context real quick. Well, the, the, um, I wrote about yeah. this back in 2013. Did you th- when you wrote about it originally on Complex? Did you think that this would ever be a movie I mean, that I, they would that they would they would option your your listicle? To it's be a great a fucking. It's film? a great. It's a great fucking. Uh, it is a great film. story, and um, it's a book. There's a book on this, obviously. First the and foremost. problematic title of this listicle from February 2013 was the tw- <laughs> Mamma Mia: <laughs> Colon. That's a spicy beat the ball. Fifteen ways to to murder your husband Gucci style. <laughs> murder a, uh, to murder a wapo. Uh, no, it was uh, the twenty most ratchet moments in recent fashion history, which is like 
Damn, dude. Uh, yeah, J- James Harris. Some other shit on this. Your byline just attached to like a ghetto headline. Yo, number three, John Galliano's anti-Semitic rant. Number two is Zach Posen, publicist. Oh no, a publicist slapped at the Zach Posen New York Fashion Week. Can show. we just read our old listicles on Pod? Would that count for boys? Kid Alt tags Mark Jacobs' store, and then Mark Jacobs like made a T-shirt of it and like profit. How is that, that even problematic? That's a fucking no, it's, not, it's, it's move. ratchet. It's oh, not ratchet. Problematic. Excuse yeah. me. Kenneth Cole. Damn, honestly, that I just showed my ass. Kenneth Cole tweeted about Cairo and the the Arab Spring. Oh, that, that was shit. incredible, dude. That that's uh, that's an that's an iconic moment. Dutch magazine Jackie calls deafness. Rihanna a n asterisk 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 bitch. Um, Jesus Christ. Carl Lagerfeld opens his mouth. Sure. Gianni Versace murder. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah. Right, a lot of these, right. and then like a lot of racism. But number one on the uh, esteemed list, <laughs> the twenty most ratchet moments in recent fashion history, which is due for an update. Complex. I'm looking at you. You know, we have eight years of ratchetness to catch up with. This happened in March of 95. Maurizio Gucci, the grandson of the house's founder and heir to the Gucci fortune, was gunned down outside of his office. And I guess, like, um, the the trial took place in 98, and it was so bizarre and so kind of, like, the very sweet spot of everything in Italian pop culture that people cared about at the time and all around the world. The New York Times, this is a quote from the New York Times, telling the New York Times, Quote, the case brought together some of this country's favorite obsessions, sex, money, designer footwear, and astrology. I love that. So Maurizio <laughs> was married to this eccentric socialite, Patrizia, who was This like, is Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, who was uh, already very rich and famously said she'd rather weep in a Rolls Royce than be happy on a bicycle. Damn. There you go, future. That's right? where you future got it from. That shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Maurizio had a guma, right? And uh, <laughs> she was the reason why they got divorced. But Maurizio, in a settlement, and I'm sure, like, Italian law, I'm sure it was, like, actually Patrizio was the one, like, facing jail time for, like, you know, uh, un- uncovering the guma. <laughs> uh, Maurizio only offered her $650,000. Oh, that's paltry, dude. I'd be pissed, too. Patrizio wanted to settle, uh, wanted a million dollars. So she told her astrologist to hire a hitman. That hitman offed, sorry, whacked Maurizio. Wow. Um, the astrologist, the middleman, uh, snitched, and the hitman went to jail for life. Got it. But Patrizia, uh, who also famously said, "I would have done it myself, but like I have bad a- eyesight yeah. and I didn't want to miss." <laughs> well, when she was arrested, and put on trial, she claimed that the astrologer was blackmailing her. But despite that, she was happy that her ex man's mm-hmm. was murdered. Um, Fuck him. She was sentenced to twenty six years in jail. After thirteen years, half the sentence, she was offered parole but rejected it. Because <laughs> galaxy brand, she didn't want to get a job on the outside. <laughs> yeah, respect which, that. What's been a condition for her, like you know, uh, right. early release? Her work, yes, yeah, like, work at, release. You know, respect. Yeah, I get that. She also said, "quote I would prefer to stay in my cell and water my plants and take care of my pet ferret." <laughs> wow, what kind of so situation is fucking... that in Italian prison too? Where you get to have a pet, you get conjugal visits from oh, a I mean, pet ferret and garlic with razor blades. Whoa, you know, like, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Right, it famously seen the they're documentary fucking, Goodfellas. They're snapping up fit pics with NBA young boy. Like right, she's good. Right. She's Gucci. She's literally Gucci. Uh, and and the 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 beef. So so t- and today you sent me an article in, uh, from the Guardian where wh- whatever whoever I- the real Gucci's right so that are that, still alive that woman Patrizia Gucci I think it may it may not be her I don't know there's another person named Patrizia Gucci uh, it's not her it's another Gucci we're doing a terrible job the dude that got this. murdered Maurizio Adam Driver her second cousin told AP yes his second yeah, Jared right. Leto with a bald head dressed in the lilac suit were horrible oh. horrible. <laughs> I still feel offended. <laughs> That's such an Italian European thing where it's like, listen, the trauma that exists in my life that I want to complain to the British press about, the the fucking global British press, is not about my fucking cousin being murdered via right. proxy by his wife and how that affects the family name. It's that in the cinematic portrayal of these people, uh uh He's bald. Uh, Jared Leto yep. is playing guy, and he's too bald and too fat. And Al Pacino's sideburns well, are too long, and is making my grandfather or whatever look like shit. So this is confirmed <laughs> a different Patrizia, uh, you know, unoriginal family name. I guess. name. Um, well, there's Patrizia Reggiano, Pecorino Reggiano, and then there's Patrizia Gucci. Jesus Christ! The Gucci, <laughs> Mamma Mia! The Gucci meatball says of Al Pacino, <laughs> "My grandfather was a very handsome man, like all the Gucci's, and very tall, blue eyes, and very elegant." He is being played by Al Pacino, who is not very tall already. And this photo shows him as fat, short, with sideburns, really ugly, shameful, (laughs) because he doesn't resemble him at all. She said the family, the Gucci family, was, quote, truly disappointed. I speak on behalf 
of La Familia. <laughs> they are stealing the identity of La Cosa Nostra. Una Familia to make a profit, to increase the income of the Hollywood system. Our, our family has an identity. Privacy. We can talk about everything, but there's a borderline that cannot be crossed. A Ridley Scott uh, biopic about your family uh, is not like Olive Garden. Do you and think uh, when you're here, you're not family? Get fucking because no, yo, I will, yo, giving her first of all, yo, shout out the most European response ever to your family's fucking <laughs> dirty laundry being put on the silver screen. But I will say that if someone told me that Jared Leto was going to play Larry in the Throne Fitz biopic, and then I saw a fucking paparazzi pic <laughs> on just ja on just Jared, where this motherfucker had a fucking fake gut and was fucking fully balding, I would be offended as shit. Yeah, but you're dead. You got gunned <laughs> down on the fucking steps <laughs> yeah. of Chateau Jimbo trying yeah, yeah. to record a fucking slapper. I am excited for this movie. Obviously, Sir Ridley Scott is as unimpeachable as directors and auteurs get. And apparently, what the Guardian kind of... Uh, let's not bury the lead here. Apparently, the movie is going to be very kind of soapy and campy and makes yeah. me think of the Gianni Versace or um, uh, OJ show, uh, whatever, American Crime Story or whatever the fuck that is, where I want to see, like... You know, a story that is like, you know, as real to the, what actually happened, but still, but but maybe stretched a bit for entertainment purposes. And then, like, let's camp it up. Let's yeah. ham it up. Let's turn it up to 11. I'm very excited for this. The cinematographer, some Polish name, described the film as a soap opera. He said it's a bit kitschy. Mm. Funny, tragic tragedy, like it. a high-end soap opera with a crazy cast as well. Yes, yeah. the cast is the, fucking the crazy. Stack, the, the cast is fucking stacked. I, I can't wait. Uh, apologies to, to all the living Gucci's. Though I will say, yo, listen. Yo, and to all our Italian-American fans yeah, that, that have been extremely, been <laughs> extremely <laughs> fucking offended. Sorry slur earlier. You can't um, be racist against Italians. Everybody knows that. That's the ultimate well, fucking they are, loophole. Well, they are hot-blooded monsters, famously. <laughs> so uh, we should Christ. not, you know, a lot of... Cal Calabrian peppers. Yeah, God, God forbid we're, we're racist against these hot-blooded monsters and then they, <laughs> with marinara flowing through their veins and, and they get offended. God forbid what the re repercussions will be. Uh, uh, I do think that uh, this is also very interesting in that, like, yo, the actual Gucci's, right? They're not involved with Gucci at all anymore. They fucking yeah. flipped that shit to yeah. caring and it's like, yo, I'm sorry, but, like, you lost the fucking plot. You know, you do not control. You lost, you lost the IP. You you lost. You listen. You can take it from us. You lost the IP. You can't do shit about it. You can cry to the press, but ultimately, this movie is coming out, and a lot of people are going to see it, and it's going to be fucking spicy. It's going to be delicioso, and uh, you're probably going to be offended by all of the various portrayals. You know what the P stands what for happens? in Italian IP? Tell me, Parmigiano. <laughs> all right. Uh, on the flip side of the fucking luxury spectrum is. Our boys at Patagucci. Ooh, another type right? of Gucci. Also in the Patagucci news, Nelly. Although, they kind of flew low under the radar with this. Um, Patagonia is basically trying to pull the rug out from the whole Corpo Gorpo cottage industry. They want to throw the hammer of justice down on these motherfuckers, finally. All right, so real quick, what happened was uh, Patagonia, you know, everyone in finance gets fucking corporate swag with a Patagonia vest, uh, whether it's, you know, down if you're, or If your fleece. company is doing well and you're balling, God forbid if it's North Face or North Columbia. Face, mm. Yeah, do Jesus. not invest in those motherfuckers, yeah. but uh, stonks. Um, but no, so Patagonia was like, yo, you can no longer use our shit for corporate swag because their claim is that because stamping a bank's logo on it shortens the lifespan of a garment. <laughs> they're like, who the fuck wants, you know, a Goldman Sachs, right. you know, Which I would vest. say a lot of people, apparently. Well. Because this is, and this is something that. A lot that of people that, like fetishize money and capitalism. Yeah, and I think that uh, they're. Ironically and unironically. And, uh, and there's been a few articles about this. I know uh, Jack Carlson from Rolling Blaze is a big collector, but the, the banking swag kind of merch vertical category of, of garment is big, right? The right. banker bags, the the dad hats, the all these like dead tees. companies like Lehman Brothers, right, right, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, um, Salman Brothers, all, all the people that were absolutely fucking directly associated with the with the fu the, the financial crisis of two thousand nine, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, um, seven, and and I think that this is kind of like the this is the more modern version. We should double check with Dunk on this, but this is like the modern version of that stuff where it's like you said the the fleece vest, you know, emblazoned with some type of embroidery from yeah. a financial so institution. The, the way they did it and. And we were talking about this with uh, a legendary editor earlier today. The way they did it, and, and I was right, by the way, um, is that it's kind of sneaky and smart in that they, they Patagonia told the uh, supply, the, the merch the vendors, the merch vendors that they work with, they're like, vendors. yo, we're not going to supply you with Patagonia anymore because we don't want uh, bankers and Finn bros to fucking slap their logo on the chest because 
they claim it shortens the life of the garment, right? right? And so it's bad for the earth. It's bad for you know Mother Gaia. But there's some theories floating around that like because of COVID and because factories shut down, it's actually that Patagonia. They needed that gear back to sell themselves. They weren't able to produce throughout the in, throughout yeah. the uh, COVID, right? So they they have a very limited the supply of inventory. Shout out to the Italians, yeah, exactly. Um, shout out to George Foreman, and so like they weren't able to to sh- ship that out to these vendors because they had to actually supply it to them to their yeah. own direct customers. Yeah, no take backsies has been suspended because of the panini, and we actually need um, all of this stuff that we can, we can sell it ourselves. I mean, you know, my introduction to to a lot of this gore. Happened in the South when I when I was in college in Patagonia. Oh, famously uh, cold and mountainous climate. Yeah, of of Winston Salem, North Carolina, and it's really funny. And when we were obviously talking about this with uh, said editor earlier. We're not going to blow up her spot because this is going to be in print. And I love listen. If you and I love anything, it is seeing our name in print. Oh yeah, and that, that we are and we are scooping her on but, her own story. But but it, but it, it was always interesting to me to see like you know Patagonia and, and North Face and etc. You know being worn as a status symbol and and being like impressed and thinking it was cool because in New Jersey people don't really you know there's no real like prep that whole Ivy prep shit where I guess people do associate with Princeton. Yeah, w- w- that people ass- well okay sure but <laughs> <laughs> not Northern New Jersey um, but uh, that you know that people do associate some of this corp with so I didn't see it there so I was exposed later in life and thinking it was very cool and then ultimately when I made my way uh, back up north and did a, a few stints on Wall Street were you with, actually with, on with Wall Street because I know you yeah. you had a you were actually on Wall Street. I interned at Bank of New York Mellon at the at the fixed income desk, and uh, there was you know Corpo Gorpo there. There yeah. was kind of Finn Bros. That would have been two thousand eight, two thousand right, right bef- leading up to, and then during the the financial Wait, so crisis. Leading up that to, were, were, was the money like f- was everyone flush with money? Like, were you being taken out to like strip clubs? No, like- nothing, nothing super sick. I don't have any great stories, and if I had those great stories, I would have told them on the pod. I, I mean, know, it was just, just a like, whole part of your life that I've never heard about. I mean, you know, free lunches every day, just like you know, hearing guys. Well, one. Dude, I worked with killed himself, which is like was, while you were there. Yeah, while I was there. That how? Was, uh, why did he do it? How do you do it? Uh, he was a traitor because you were, you were was, on his desk. He was going through. He was going through some fucking crazy divorce, and I think he was also having professional issues, from what I remember at the time. And yeah, it was super. And also, it's like yo, the kind of personalities that are drawn to that world, you could also make extrapolations there. But right, big uh, that guy. but I will say that there was this to me, and I didn't realize it at the time. But now looking back, and we were talking about on this call earlier, there's such this pipeline of these like southern kind of frat bros yeah. that see this stuff as status symbols that ultimately get hired on Wall Street. But even, right out but of College. But even before that, like it, they're wearing their fraternities. Yes, merch, right. And it like, is. Yo, this is my fucking. This is my squadron. squad. This is my fucking team. We're being if fucking, I'm fucking very in your face about it. Yeah. If they're kappa 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 kkk, <laughs> Yo, okay, right? Okay, and right, they right. see some fucking. That's uh, and that's just uh, ka- kappa alpha, which yeah. is uh, oh, okay. Robert E. Lee uh, was a was a was a founding. Are you was a founding. Yeah. Wow, that is bad. I don't want to say too much shit. Where like, I guess I don't care about behind the paywall. The oh, whole, all these frat boys are gonna, all these frats. The are gonna rumor come after you. with Ka at Wake Forest was that um, they didn't allow black uh, black members. And by the time I graduated, I think there was one African American brother, and I believe that that was probably uh, just a straight up fucking pander tokenization move Yikes. to combat that. Uh, idea that kind of like you know rumor or whatever but anyway for me seeing that pipeline now in retrospect or talking about it having the context seems very clear that those same kind of guys would be very much drawn to that corpo right. gorpo fin bro swag well later in life also it's it's, it's a bit of a uniform right what well, you are on team goldman team chase team fucking you know yeah, Maryland, Morgan Stanley, whatever. Maryland, whatever where your life you have to kill yourself. I mean, we all saw industry like this dude. Well, first of all, the guy, you know, literally killed himself. <laughs> yeah, but you had to like work sure. 100 hour weeks and like Sorry uh, for laughing. die at your desk, you know, all in the name of eking out a profit at the expense of like the entire earth. Right. Yeah. Mother Gaia. Um, and so you need this fucking like identity of like or tribalism. Right. Where it's yes. like, yo, I'm yes, fucking 100%. team Goldman. I'm fucking team, you know, Merrill Lynch, uh, Morgan Stanley, chest. whatever. Bang on my chest. R- real ape hours. <laughs> um, and so like you. And it is like a nice little perk. My theory was always that like the offices are too cold. Like everyone has a fucking office sweater. Very practical right? theory. Yeah, and also it, it is like you know whether it's like at the job fair at fucking Kappa 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 or right. at you know first day first week orientation. You're like, yo, here's a bag full of free shit. Here's your fucking badge, right? You belong. You're one of us. Yeah, you're one, one of, of us. us. One of us. Yeah, 100. Um, mm-hmm. percent And 
No, so where the fuck are we going with this? Yeah, so... Uh, the tribalism. No, you're yeah, talking tribalism. about the tribalism. So the Corporal Gorbro shit, and like obviously Patagonia, like its entire ethos, which of any company doing the lip service, they probably stand by their ethos. Yeah, they're the, the realest. In, it's in the, it's the least amount of cap per capita yes. of any yeah. of these bigger brands, for right. sure. So the way they went about this in like... Uh, no Black Friday, no Cyber I mean, Monday. You see Noah, uh, who we just kind of lambasted on The Last Boys Only, take a lot of cues from Patagonia, but we, gun to head, they, they mean it. As much as any corporation yo, our could boys, mean it. Our boys, Mick and Khan, who put together... You know, co-created industry, which is a you know exploration and critique of the whole financial and an industry. An accurate portrayal, and an accurate portrayal, if not sensationalized, based on personal experiences, degree. like the Gucci move. They told us the Gucci move. Well, they told the fairy godmother Nomi Fry's second name drop. Um, but also they told us, yo, Patagonia was like not having it. They were like, yeah. we don't, we will not let you run our logo in your show. Right, which I, which I guess to put the bow on this, it's like, listen, whether we're talking about real sustainability or, you know, fucking supply chain issues with COVID, at the end of the day, Patagonia needed to do this, right? right. And the fact that they hadn't done it earlier, I think probably surprises a lot of people, surprised, excuse me, a lot of people like you and I who look at them as a cool brand. Maybe we don't hold it in the same type of luxury esteem the average person does, but I do think that this was a long time coming and something that you and I can appreciate because yeah. as Patagonia, as baggy fanatics, evangelists, yep. acolytes, as retro X and Snap T purchasers and wearers, like, yeah, dude, get these fucks out of here. The amount of Instagram DMs that I have gotten since we've been associated with Barstool from, you know, a variety, a spectrum of whether enlightened or unenlightened kind of stoolies that connect felt that they could connect with us with this, you know, f you know, what is the what is the Venn diagram between John's enthusiast and fucking you know, uh, Finn Bros. It's Patagonia. Pa it's Patagonia, right? It's like the only thing in the middle. It's and so, and that, and I'm not hating on on a way to connect with all types of people because you and I, hey, we want to be as rich as right. a fucking as an arms dealer, as Jamie Dimon. It, it, yeah. it is really funny so though I'm that not like hating, uh, but these fucking that was a kind of a bummer. The, these <laughs> finance dudes that like fancy themselves, you know, mountain conquerors, right? They're like, oh, like, right. all we do is move mountains. All we do is fucking prop up the economy. Yeah. They're literally outfitting themselves in like mountain. Conquering in gear, yeah, that's a great even point. though it's like all you do is go from your you know fiftieth floor office down yeah. to the fucking salad. You would take an elevator to the top of of Everest if yeah. you were able to, motherfucker. Um, I mean, I would too. So who am I? To yeah, judge? for sure. But uh, I guess the last point I'll make is also just like I I have to imagine that um, wearing your bank's swag to the bank. Ha is seems like a very rookie move. Wearing right? a band tee, not like a band, actually not like a band tee to the concert because like because you don't own the, the band <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, well not yet. And yeah. obviously the bank is providing this, but I think there is a point where it's like, yo, your MD is probably not wearing the same fucking you know uh, uh, emblazoned vest as you. He's wearing like Laura Piana yeah. or Montclair or whatever, or right? Fucking, like, or the Deadbird. Yo, yo, you know? there's levels yo, he, to this he's shit. Wearing, he's wearing Arteric's leaf. Yeah, right. <laughs> I would love yeah. to see, yo, Coop, I don't know if, you were, if you're a patron, but uh, Arteric, I feel like Arteric's getting rid of leaf would be like equivalent to Patagonia. It's weird that Arteric's different. never found themselves in a Corpo Gorpo situation, at least as far as I know. I've, you know, maybe, maybe now because they are so. I mean, you know, I wore Arc to the crib. I mean, you and I have been out here putting on. We are one of many people putting on. Right maybe it is so hype that Arc has made its way to Wall Street, but for the most part, Patagonia was of the pecking order. It's Columbia, North Face, and then. Patascucci, <laughs> number one. So, you know, I get it. But but that's definitely an act like you've been here before right. thing. Uh, that's definitely a first year, second year type maneuver. A little bit corny. You and I, you, like, you wouldn't wear it to the bar, right? Like, if you're trying Patagonia? to... Patagonia? No, 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 no. Meaning, like, oh, you're... Oh, my, my shit? Over your suit. You're not... I mean, that's... Well, hang it up at the front, no, dog. I'm not going to fucking bars in Midtown and Murray Hill because I'm not trying to sleep with, you know, like, uh, other, like, sorority girls. But yeah. I do. I there's gotta be <laughs> West Village. Also, don't let's pre not, right. let's let's not pretend all, that all, downtown isn't fucking all of Manhattan except for Dime yeah. Square. Um, <laughs> the last bastion you know, of good taste. Imagine some fucking banker coming through in his Morgan Stanley uh, Corpo Gorpo in Dime Square. Just be like, yo, I'm a clandestino. Let me get a fucking. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yo, catch me at Let me get a Tito's and soda double, bitch Yo, catch me at Dr. Clark's ordering a fucking Michelob Ultra <laughs> A round of Michelob Ultras <laughs> for all the fucking I just artists and journalists and, I just yeah. closed the deal, bro Like, yeah, how could I Yo, I just bought the Drunken Canal <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 
I just got the drunk and canal. Michelob Ultra's for everybody. Ken- Kendall Roy. Run just, it. Kendall Roy and his fucking it. pod boots. Uh, Dad, I just, I just bought this hot property. It's called the drunken canal. <laughs> yeah, like when he copped the fake But he, fuck, he fucks up. He actually bought the sober canal. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> you blew it, Kendall. You were on too much coke, dude. Fucking Goots and Claire spit in his face. Oh, man. Shout out Goots and Why Claire. Why don't you call your daddy? Can't, can't, um, wait, can't wait to pop with you ladies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, soon come. Um, but no, this whole fucking Corpo Gorpo thing. Look, it's over. I know is you're it o- wait, no, is it over? No, is it I, know, over? I know you're sad a little bit because no. like you are you, you are born in this world. Uh, your your style icon, Bernie Madoff. Oh, Rip yeah. ass, <laughs> bi- you dead bitch. Damn, this motherfucker dude. died. Uh, a lot of people are like, yo, I'm surprised. He I thought that he would killed himself years ago. No, that was his son. Yes. That hung himself. <laughs> yeah. Bernie Madoff was alive and well until, I don't know, like Monday or Tuesday. Um, died he prison. died. He died in federal prison. The worst way to go out. He is one of these rich white motherfuckers. And I know that I get a lot of shit for always calling out white people. Sorry that our audience is all white. Um, that I'm just like, yo, I cannot get on board with like endorsing this old white dude as a style icon. Yeah, I but mean, he's, your, he's your goat. No, he's not my go, and he's not really my style icon. I would like, though, in memory of Bernie Madoff, I would like to correct one thing. He, uh, him and his wife, I guess together, they actually owned 37 pairs mm. of Belgians. That photo that has been zooted into Bolivia. Zooted and booted. And everyone was uh, using to, to, to eulogize the man. That was just a specific picture and lot of 18 Belgians. So I just want to be clear, Bernie... Uh, and Mrs. Madoff, they own 20 around, and well, what are Belgians it's like, now, like? It's now Ms. Madoff. Yes. Um, and Belgians are like, let's say, we'll call it 600 bucks, depending on, you know, the custom fucking fabric you're going to, you know, or the custom <laughs> material you're going to use. No, it's like 22 grand's worth of shit, right? Yeah. Yes. Which is not which, that which, which, when you're, when, when you are, and I would also say, I'm not trying to defend Bernie Madoff because he not only ripped off his fucking rich friends, those bastards who deserve to be to be ripped off, the people that that James was just lambasting, you know, seconds yeah, ago. He built a bunch of charities. Yeah, you know, like no, no, no. Fucking... But and he also ripped off a lot of real people um, and pension funds and things like that. But I will say that he has been kind of he was used as a martyr to some degree to kind of be the fall guy for the totality of the financial crisis, where a lot of these other fucking main offenders. Who who were actually fucking part and parcel fucking, uh, 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 you know, engineers of this yeah. disastrous moment uh, in economic history for this country, like literally got off scot free. And we don't need to rehash this. Well, he's a bit, he's a bit of the symptom, not the disease, right? Uh, I, yeah. I get that you, I get that you're a. Fu- he's a scapegoat. He's I get a that martyr. you're trying to get your fucking chapo trap house, which by the way we'll talk about soon. Uh, you know, mindset, fucking tweet off. Um, and yeah. you know, ingratiate yourself <laughs> to those motherfuckers. <laughs> sure. Those, you know, the same way we're. He's trying a to- bad guy, but like, let's let's not. But pretend. he's a, he's a bad guy. Yeah. Largest human scheme in human in history. Ponzi scheme in Ponzi human history, scheme. which uh, almost as like Gucci and Balenciaga is so brazen, you almost low key gotta respect it. Hey, listen, don't take it from us. Watch the fucking made for it's not TV, it's HBO movie, made for HBO movie featuring Bobby D, mm. a great Italian, um, a I, 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 someone who I it, I, I am it really very seem- curious. I'm very curious as to why he w- he was not cast at all. It really just seems that. like there is a correlation that cannot be ignored between these rich white guys that dress like honestly kind of like what the fit I'm wearing. Yeah, a little banker fit. The yeah. fits that you. Oh, the CFO of Alden. That's what he I'm saying. Just, like, he just pled guilty, right? That's what I'm saying. So what was there, his deal? There's there's a correlate. There's a correlation that cannot be ignored between like. Jeffrey Epstein's, you know, uh, loafers who got big fits off and dad jeans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, um, it's a lo- it, it's a vibe. It's a vibe, but if the vibe also, you know, involves a lot of uh, disconcerting amount Damn. of child Yo, pornography, then and like child sex trafficking, I, then would you be pissed if I put as the resident zoodsman if I put uh, Epstein in a delicioso no, I'm not 90s be pissed, fit? But I'm just like, why do you why zoot. do you continue I'll zoot like, it? Honor, honor, and <laughs> fucking not honoring him. Boot like these uh, old white guys. We're when, not Belgian like, licking. Like, why is anyone surprised? Like, any old white dude that is a style icon always ends up having a fucking. I mean, Steve McQueen, fucking wife beater. Paul Newman probably said the N word. I mean, I'm <laughs> also don't quote me on that. And also for uh, the Newman estate, if you're listening, though, I highly doubt you are. Yeah, uh, send, yo, send us some lemonade, though. Do, do not, do not fucking uh, sue Throngfits LLC. Honestly, if you're going to sue Throngfits LLC for 
either libel and or slander, use this current address. Let's uh, let's yes. hit let's hit that. We'll we'll don't, get don't, that. Don't do it because it's too. Well, no, I'm, I'm not going to say it. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll be served at this address, no, the, and then so we can conveniently be like we missed the it. The latest instance of. Um, you know, some fucking swagged out old white guy committing crimes that you know are mostly victimless is the the CFO of Alden just pled guilty to embezzling thirty million dollars from the company itself. I'm going to use Ryland the Merchman's joke here from the group chat because it was so good. Shell company, sh- what was it? Shell oh, Corvin. Okay. Ah, fucked it up right. Shell Corvin, more like Shell Company. Yeah, he, this man was just trying to fucking uh, you know buy Fuck. some swag for his, for his side bitch. Yeah, that's, I mean that's. <laughs> That's a tale as old as time. You could be the CFO of Alden. You could be a fucking garbage man. You could be anybody with a guma. You know, listen, if you get involved with, and listen, it's not even based a chick, a dude, whoever. You get involved with a side piece, regardless of gender. Oh, you're in if over they, your head. If, you, if they have expensive taste, you get. You could be the CEO of the, the number one made in American fucking footwear company. You are going to be in over your head. I mean, potentially. this, man, this, man's, this man's taste, receipts. Is is. This man's receipts for like diamond earrings yep. and like fucking you know shoes better than Alden's. We're like <laughs> <laughs> exhibit A and Manolo's. B in trial. Yeah. Like, do you think that like you said I'm that the CFO of Alden, but my bitch want Jimmy Choo? <laughs> <laughs> choo choo. Yeah. But it, it really yo is it some. Not to get all fucking conspiracy theory over here, but is it some shit where his wife, his main bitch, found out about the side bitch and was like, yo. What's the deal, Mr. Yo? CFO, what the <laughs> fuck going on? And he's yeah, like, where are all, the, all these gifts? All these gifts that you were buying, why did they not end up in my closet? And exactly. it very much reminds me of uh, our boy, uh, a drip thief. A mustard of the beat. Oh. DJ Mustard famously stole Fit Check from yes. us and renamed That's it to thing. Drip Check. Uh, <laughs> his personal shopper. Stole fifty thousand yeah. dollars worth of spicy garms and johns, uh, threw it on his card, and he put her on blast on the internet. And we looked her up because we we're like, "Who is this?" Chris Walker, Chris C. Walker. She recently gained uh, close to three thousand new followers. I like that on her probably mostly botted out, you know, following. Sure, um, we got to check the engagement. But yo, when when I see he, when we looked when we saw. Listen, we're not here. We're not Chuck, gonna don't, we're, Chuck, don't put the nipples photo. We're, we're, right we're not here. gonna like, objectify you. We don't want to be taken down off YouTube. But when you and I were doing professional high level research for our job and we saw her, we're like, wait a second. You're telling me that I'm putting the microphone up to the photo. <laughs> yeah, please don't <laughs> don't put your microphone up to your nipples. When we saw when we were doing research and we saw what she looked like, okay. Listen, personal shoppers can be hot, right? A lot of jobs can be hot. But this to me, I'm like, wait a second. Did DJ Mustard have a side piece? Mustard of the beat, ho. And he was like, you know what? Listen, we're gonna fucking get around. What's all your favorite f- DJ Mustard song, real quick? Uh I'm a uh, favorite beat? Yeah. I'm different. Yeah. Right, oh, which is did he do rich as fuck? You don't have no mic in front of your mouth? No. This will be the outro music. Whatever, Whatever it is. Rich as fuck or I'm different. Shout out fucking 2 chains on both those fucking beats. Um, and also shout out Wayne. Um, I am not a human being. Was Mustard, no, the, right, dude, so was Mustard the guy that was hooking up with Miley Cyrus? No, but he was the one that helped her when she did her uh, uh, musical blackface, <laughs> I believe is the I'm the pretty sure they're term. fucking. Really? If that's the case, it's he gotta was be fat, then. The, uh, so- her song with Jordans with Juicy J. Jay's right. on my feet. Yeah, Jay's on my feet. Um, no, so when we looked up the personal shopper and she was absolutely dime status Out here, you and I immediately galaxy brained. And uh, speaking <laughs> of the Alden CFO, we were like, yo, honestly, dude, this is DJ Mustard's side piece. He's like, you could be my personal shopper. Here's the fucking black card. Yep. Uh, Get yourself something nice, and you already know his fucking wife was like, where are all the Gucci bags? Where are all the bodysuits? Where are all the fucking bikinis that uh, are being run up? Why are they not in my closet? And you already know he had no choice but to definitely go score earth and be like, oh, no, my personal shopper robbed me. And yeah. then he fucking puts her on blast on IG, which if you are caught in a lie, do you ever over... Yeah, deliver? you over this is, this is what Come happened. On, this bro. is what happened with... Christ- Come on. This is what happened with Christianity... Virgin Mary was like, oh, oh, no, God blessed me with a baby. Yeah. I, I, I'm, pr- I, I'm pregnant, but I'm still a virgin, Joseph. Uh, yeah, it was God. It yeah. was, g- yeah, for he, sure. And this is the son of God, and it's a blessing, and they're going to write a book about this one day. This and- reminded me of um, <laughs> a, 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 an unnamed rapper. 
right? I was doing a bunch of uh, oh, videos you're not going to say a bunch of videos with him at Def Jam. And, oh, um, come on, dude! I had to liaise with. Can you give us a hint? I, I, can't, I know, but I, I know who it is. Can you give a hint? I can't. Uh, I used to give a damn, but I never gave a fuck. What's up? Yo, it's it's cold. It's cold, yo. It's cold. <laughs> <Burr. here outside. laughs> oh no, that's Gucci. It's not Gucci Mane. <laughs> no. Um, but his creative director was just kind of like. Creative director, you know, thicker than a snicker. Ooh. Like crea- creative director of the whole brand, the whole opera, the whole album rollout, everything. And she like had was involved in everything. And I was like, she was fucking like she did not. She was very much a like creative director of Lincoln, you know, uh, in bio. Sure, right, um, a complete capper. Yeah, which we're gonna talk about tomorrow with our esteemed guest. Yes, a complete capper. Like no fucking style. She like designed the merch. She like was creative director on all the music videos. And there was a reason why like this sh- all the shit was ass, <laughs> and the fucking sales reflected that. But True. she had a bit of a fucking Subaru on her backside. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a fatty. <laughs> And you put one and two she together was, quite quick. She was pushing that Kia Soul, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "No hamsters." I was like, "Yo, how did you and this rapper link? Like, how long you've known it? How long you've been working here?" And she's like, "Oh, I met him at the club." I was like, "Oh, word! Like, were you like also performing? Were you and rising like, and grinding?" She's like, "No, I was, you know, I was a bottle girl, but like, mm. I was like, yo, uh, rapper, I got like these ideas, and he wanted to hear them, and sure. I started telling my ideas, and yeah, come show, back to my hotel room and pitch me, showing him my fashions." And yeah, ever since then, I've just been creative director of this guy's mm. brand, this like very big rapper's brand for you know the past like three or four years I'm now. Not mad at that. And it really yeah, was like it really was one of these things where it's like yeah, like we're fucking. Here's my obviously. Here's my company card. Like go do whatever and just write it off as a business expense. Like why else would you want to become a rapper than to just like fuck bottle girls and be like yeah, she's my creative director. Like you know right. my, my. That's art why you get in the game to begin with. And yo, know, shout out DJ Mustard. It seems like you dodged a fucking bullet on this one. You got People Magazine writing about this shit, backing up your story. When Jimmy and Larry, we see right through the fucking cap, yep. right through the fucking bullshit. All it takes is is just hit. Look at somebody's Instagram. With with the fucking nips out. She deleted the IGs though, where she was wearing the. Johns. She got caught. She was. I mean, Mustard was literally like, "Yo, look here, circle on their seat. This is the John that she bought, and she, here's the fucking she was IG making that six thousand. He said specifically, she was making six six thousand a month, six thousand dollars a month. That's seventy two k a year. No. Right, just to like be the personal shopper to and, and what he said he fucking know? threw that away for some Instagram likes. It's like, yeah, yeah. welcome to peak flex yeah. culture, right? And and you got to think that if I am whatever the personal shopper slash if maybe pre- presumed side piece, uh, it's like, yo, that's an occupational hazard, right? You knew what you're kind of getting DJ into. DJ QP mayonnaise over here, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a super bummer uh, that she is off the payroll now and not getting dicked down by Dijon himself, I but. Mean, sh- so might be. I mean, maybe, like, but 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 ultimately, uh, this to me just stinks of a fucking Kansas City shuffle, a little fucking revisionist history on part of DJ Mustard. And I understand. Also, I mean, like you know, I'm not cheating on my wife, but yo, know, sometimes I get I get fucking busted, blasting the dart, having too many cocktails, and I gotta conveniently hit up my fucking fall guy, bad influence Jimmy, and pass that <laughs> buck like fucking white chocolate in the paint, dog. Did, you, did your wife think I smoked? Like is that what it is? No, not that. That's but but I would just wait. Do you still use bad influence, Jimmy? No, 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 no. I mean, my wife knows that if I have had one sip of alcohol and I am around anybody that is even a casual smoker, you know, I'm going to go. Hey, 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 hey. You finish with that? Can I? Can I? What you want? Me, what you want? Let me get what one. You need? Let me get what one. You need? Let me get one. Let me get one. That's the, that's the game, bro. That's the game we play. The reason why we brought up DJ Mustard is that he's a phenomenal live performer. No, <laughs> <just kidding. laughs> I forgot that we still have to talk about our fucking live show. Yo, Throwing Fits is back, baby. Uh, we never have had a live show, though, so there's nothing right. to be back. 13 though. months ago, we were slated, actually, exactly. Yo, right now. Exactly 13 months ago on let March. Me, oh, hold on, let me check the rollie. That don't that shit don't tick tock. Yeah. Uh-huh. On March uh-huh. yeah. 19th. 18th. 18th. Yeah, you could look it up. We Saturday, was, Friday, well, something you can't look like it up. that. Uh, we were slated to have no the a, calendar. I mean. Okay, we were was slated to, Friday to have a, our first ever live show, which we, I think that we've talked about. By the way, I, you were like, we've never mentioned this. What no, was it? What the venue was at the Knitting Factory? Oh, here, we here, talked about here, on here, right, right, Yeah, right, across yeah. the street for the Commodore because we're like, yo, the afters at the Commodore, <laughs> hot press for everybody. <laughs> exactly, dude. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Thirteen months later, you can't hold us down. Throwing fits is back up in your fucking business. Yeah. The first ever, well, well, second ever, throwing fits live show, well, live in in you know Virgil Abloh's right, right, scare quotes, uh, is occurring 
on Saturday, June 5th. The festival name is Frequency One, we, but with no no vowels, just all consonants. We <laughs> it is a it, because live venues are still not open in New York. This will be a live show. We are on a bill with a lot of amazing names, and we will read those off yep. right now. But this is a live streamed live show that is not a juicy zooming. This right. is going to be an actual it's be like, it's live be, show from a real fucking venue. There's going to be like a, a fucking heavy duty crew. Uh, the live stream tech is going to be, you know, next. We, it's we tested be some, it. Some it's Elon sick. Musk shit. It's awesome. There's like a, a a live video chat function where you guys are fucking. They're they're the pumping in fucking applause though. Who knows I mean, how much a, we're going to get? Yo, read the lineup. Right. Read the lineup. The lineup is, and this is the fucking. You want to start top down or bottom up <laughs> for the, the lineup? I guess bottom up right uh no no start top down because you don't want to sure? lose people yes yeah, start okay. top down start. Are, you, are you sure it's only 10 or so names start um, top down okay at the top yeah. the fucking frank ocean the weekend of the, this of the dirt hotel, bag left the dirt bag left uh chopo trap house bow, 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 bow. next up every time i die Ooh. every you, time i you die know the yo so this That's is the name of the song so i will say that the show to be clear it is a festival it is a yeah. live stream festival that features both podcasts and musical it acts goes all day you buy yeah. a ticket if you want to stay there all day if you want shout to out chris whatever, the producer whatever. of chapo trap house who is chapo trap chapo. house chapo chapo trap house shout out chris this is a fucking inbound request. He saw the Patreon. <laughs> the he, fucking he, he knows the fucking vibes. Chris brought us in. Yeah, you could you could you could give me a foot massage friends, if you friends, want. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we got we got Chapel up Travis, top. Every time I die, we hate movies. Uh, we big were, podcast. We were on a Zoom with those guys. Um, yeah. Zola Jesus. Big band. Tinder Live with Lane Moore. Apparently, a phenomenal, hilarious live show slash podcast. Pom Pom Squad. No idea who they are. You goddamn motherfucking boys. Woo! The only podcast that matters throwing fits. What the fuck is good, bitch? Fourth from the bottom. You know? Yeah. We're, we're like, we will be again, on at 4.30 p.m. Yeah, if you have like uh, Ariana Grande, <laughs> yeah. right? At the it's top, like Coachella. At the top of the Coachella bill, we are um, the future islands. We are, right? size, like, we are size 12 font on the poster, yeah. <laughs> which I believe you gotta is do like a control, accurate. You got to do a control F. Yeah. Like, oh, they're in some yeah. they're in some tent I've never heard of. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> below us, well, you know, not to say that they're worse than us, but no. just less popular. Downtown boys. No idea who that then is. Then episode one. Yo, shout out episode one. Hilarious fucking podcast. Shout out episode one. Check it out. Wait, so well, don't check it out too hard. Check out, check <laughs> Wait, so episode one, like you respect it, you like it? I love episode one. I and they're am, beneath us. So I you know am, that the quality of the, the quality of everything above episode one is fucking Oh, there, there you go. A one, baby. Ooh, my own. And bringing up the rear, like, toilet paper, uh, something called Stay Inside. Yo, stay inside! Inside, we inside. Um, So we just went back and forth with the Pitbull lawyer. He gave us a lot of amendments, you know, on the clauses and the addendums and shit. Because, uh, you know, we're serious businessmen. Um, of course, if we're nothing we finally else. finally fucking signed... The paperwork, the ink is it's dry. Official. It's happening June 5th. Get your tickets on some site. You're the first. The, our best friends behind the paywall are the first to fucking hear about it. We will be talking about it a bunch and promoting it uh, up until yeah, the show that, actually goes no live. Like, it's it, it's going to be like above and beyond the Juicy Zoomy. We know that nobody except the dudes on the court are listening at this point, so we'll drop the link in there to copy your tickets today right now. Oh, it's um, a, you can cop right now? Not right now, but when it's Oh, when it's... Okay, I got it. What? So here's the million... Dollar question. And by million, I mean. Here's the $1,000 question. Yes. <laughs> What's one million divided by a thousand? Um, what is our live show going to be? Uh, because we were asked this by the producers of the show. They're like, hey, what do you guys like? What's your stage setup? What's your running show? Like, what do you need? Mm. What a What's your AV like? And, and we were like, that's a great question. It's like, you know what? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we're gonna think, we're gonna we're think like, yo, about it. 12 butt, 12 butt heavies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And some tip tops. Yeah, our rider. There is, yo, it is a real show in that it is absolutely live stream, but the whole point of. We did of, spend of, like eight, nine minutes talking about the rider with, uh, Chris. Yeah. From Chapo, but but the but this is like as much as a, a live show can be that is streamed, and there's a green room, and uh, it is gonna uh, be really great for for everybody who wants to fucking tap in, and it is not gonna be a juicy zoomy. As far as what is the creative, I don't know, dude. Maybe it'll be like a round table of guests. It won't be a fucking panel, no, no clubhouse shit. No. Maybe we bring some fan favorites through for some rapid fire shit. Maybe you and I do a presentation. I think some it's type like... of educational, serviceable content. How to how to get on. Floor Flow team. I think it's like 10 How minutes. How to take a ten, pick. 10 minutes to your boys, 10 minutes with guest A, 10 minutes with guest B, 10 minutes with guest C, 10 minutes, you know, 
closing oh, with your boys. Oh, and our set is like, yo, we're doing 45 minutes. To an hour. To an hour. I think he was like, but keep it to 45. Yeah, we have a right. Well, he's like, you know. Zola Jesus is, uh, they're pretty <laughs> patient. <laughs> Every time I die. No, because we got to like walk on. The guests got to walk off. The yeah. other guests got to walk on. Um, I will be wearing a, a tuxedo. That's all that I know. I am going to Are you to fucking wear, serious? I was thinking about it, and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do it. Dude. I'm going to go Wait, black tie. I'm going to be. Really? Listen, when I meet my heroes, when I meet Chopper Trap I want to be house, dressed <laughs> like Bernie Madoff. <laughs> I want to be dressed like a goddamn fucking butler. You're going to look so cool talking to you. Uh, I think we should do tuxedos. Every time I die. In a I've, fucking tux? No, we're not going <laughs> to. I think it would be hilarious. I'm not going to. I'm going to. I'm not gonna dust. I'm not gonna bring my bonobos tux <laughs> out the motherfucking archive. No, no, bro. that's on display. You've hung it in the rafters. That's for your wedding and my wedding, and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> also, I love that you're gonna wear a bonobos tux to your own wedding, which we, which yeah. we know twenty years is never now. gonna fucking happen. Twenty years from now, yeah. Um, the lucky lady has not been born yet. Uh, <laughs> she has not. Okay, what are the what are the in, what is the most important details? June fifth. June 5th. Mark it down. Tickets on sale now. Uh, just search for the link Frequency Chop Out Trap House. Just search that. <laughs> just, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> just literally go to Felix Biederman or Will Menaker's or Matt Chrisman's uh, fucking uh, Twitter feeds uh, to find the link. And uh, yeah, I, we're, listen, we are very nervous. Question. What is and we're very excited. Very nervous. What I- We owe these guys a lot of emails. What is the groupie policy? That's something that we've never discussed. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Not that it's something you partake in at all. No. But no, but now that we're sharing a green room and maybe a tour now bus. Now we're sharing groupies. No. Uh, now that we're sharing a tour bus and a green room, what is what what groupie policy would you be most comfortable with? I would say um, I know that you're talking to myself and I guess Sheffrey Epstein and I guess Rylan and Jay and Chuck. No, not no, Chuck. not Chuck. Right, right. Uh, so I was thinking who would be there. Me first and foremost. Are we gonna bring the whole fucking squadron? Are we fucking the guest happy, list because it's kidding? like COVID protocol because venues are obviously not open yet, and this is like a this is gonna be a very safe operation. I wonder how many plus ones we're gonna get. I was gonna definitely like invite Jenna and Pepper off rip. I'm assuming that they're going to uh, graciously decline and pass um, because uh, your dog is like nah. When I when I anything like anytime I'm like Jenna like check out this she goes it's just not for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you know it's listen sweet. I appreciate you blowing up and everything that's yeah. happening for you and, and sweaty. And, yeah, but uh, but uh, I'm going to graciously. Will she, will she, uh, it's like when some dog shit float team like tries to hit right. me up. It's like the same. It's literally the exact same reaction. She's like, no, I'm um, good. I have so much of this already. But uh, is she gonna live stream it? The group. Uh, oh, we should buy a ticket. We should put. It's like Jay Z buying his champagne. You know, you sign the check, money back in your own pocket. That is an Aziz Ansari joke. Very cool. Should um, we charge a thousand tickets to the corporate card and just be like, yo, we well, fucked. Oh, Oh, like like Def Jam buying Riss, Rick Ross records on release day, on drop day. Yeah. Or uh, oh my god, uh, 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 what's not Teflon Don? Because that was a banger. What was like? Um, or Drake bought what? Who? No. What, are, what like, is this shit? What was the shitty Rick Ross record after Port of Miami Bond? three? Oh no, nah, yeah, probably. Wait, did, didn't like didn't like Drake try to buy like a bunch of this is what, tickets or something? Pit, or, like, oh, I don't know. But this is what always happens where it's labels uh, buying the records 50, on 50, drop day. Fifty bought a thousand Ja Rule tickets and was like, "Yo, like, oh, you're not then, allowed. Like, no one's oh, allowed in the first, you know, ten rows." You're or whatever. talking about Drake bought a bunch of front row tickets to push a yes. Toronto show and then made sure that and obviously tore. And then like put his fucking mob up there and then upscale Vandal. Yeah, our guy fucking right. beat somebody. Oh my on God, stage like a pink right. Celine jacket or some shit. I forgot about that. That's incredible. Um, yeah, yeah I, so. All that's gonna happen at the Throwing Fits live. It's gonna show. be crazy. Yo, should we just fight? Should we just fight? Should we just box each other like in on tuxedos? Some, like, on yeah. some like Jake Paul shit. You and I should fight each other. We should be wearing tuxedos. That should be the whole fuck. We should do that for forty five minutes. Um, no, I think the groupie policy is whatever. Whatever Jim needs to perform at peak optimal level. This is only the second time we've ever done anything like right. live. We did that trade show live pod with yeah. Christopher Green before he came actually on the only podcast that matters, and we had a great time. And we talked about cocaine with a bunch of, you know, middle-aged garmentos who were very uncomfortable. But yeah. the reviews were good, and we got paid. And I, I figure it's going to be more of the same. So however many young thotties that you need to fucking slob on your knob. So, many at the, yo, so that we can live pod. I'm down. So it's dealer's choice, baby. Uh, the every time I died, you know, sloppy seconds, like drippings. Oh, my I, God, dude. Like, I guess I'll be vaxxed up. Every so. time I bust. <laughs> 
every time I nut. <laughs> I mean, I'll be vaxxed up, so I guess like my dick will be invincible. Um, yeah. Anyway, that yeah, this has been the only podcast that matters. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of good options for outro. Yeah. Music. No, hit us up for uh, I guess info on the live show. I guess we'll one more details coming. No, soon. you don't need I to hit. I mean, you like can hit us up if you want. Obviously, again, James just, and I are just amazing Google at customer Chapo, service. Google Trap House live show um, frequency frequency, and you'll find the relevant info. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Chef, uh, don't know what the live, or sorry, don't know what the outro music is, but uh, I'm gonna need you to slap it right now.